Hey guys, welcome to church. It's going to be so awesome. Put a hand out, get a fire from the homies. Uh, it's going to be dope. Let's go. We come into his presence. Come, all you weary, come, all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Oh, come, all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, He will satisfy. Taste of His goodness, find what you're looking for. Come on, here we go. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting now With open arms, yeah She is open arms For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and only Son to save us Whoever believes in Him will live forever The power of hell forever defeated Now it is well I'm walking in freedom For God so loved God so loved the world Praise Him Praise God Praise God From whom all blessings flow Praise Him For the wonders of His love Praise God, praise God From whom all blessings flow Praise Him, oh praise Him For the wonders of His love For God so And come lay them down at the foot of the cross Oh, Jesus is waiting Cause God so loved the world Oh, God so loved the world
and take some time to pray now across Australia. This weekend, it's Anzac Day, and uh, that's the time when we remember um, the sacrifices that others have made because of the freedoms that we get to enjoy now. And uh, so why don't you join us as we pray together? Yes, Lord, we're grateful to you today for the wonderful men and women who have given their lives on our behalf, who have sacrificed their futures for us so that we can have the freedoms that we have today. Lord, we thank you for the precious family members that we know that have done this for us. And Lord, we're grateful. We thank you. We thank you for Australia and that we have the privilege of living here. And Lord, we do lift up to you those that have returned from places of conflict mm -hmm. and uh, suffer with uh, a PTSD and other types of trauma. We pray that they will find uh, peace and healing uh, through Jesus. We pray that those who care for them and those who steward resources would be guided in such a way that these people who have uh, suffered in the service of our country will be restored and made whole and Lord would find hope in their future and hope in their life. And Lord, we give you thanks. We thank you for our nation. We thank you for our leaders and we pray Lord, that you would guide us continually to be a land that is peaceful for others to come to and that will also be ambassadors for peace in other parts of the world. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey there, we're going to come together right now in a moment of giving and worship to God. And so maybe you've done this during the week. Uh, you can attach that moment to this moment. And maybe you want to give right now. There's instructions on the screen. Um, but I'd love to encourage you as we do this, as we do this practical, tangible, beautiful moment of worship to Jesus. Um, there's this, uh, uh, this really kind of funny, interesting scripture that I like in uh, the book of Luke, chapter 8, uh, verses uh, 2 onwards. And they are, it's talking about this group of women, okay? And it says, um, There were also some women who'd been cured of evil spirits and diseases, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support Jesus and his disciples out of their own means. Now, I, I often love to see when someone has been name dropped in the Bible, when they get a mention, when they get a shout out, what they've done, right? To have your name on the pages of the Bible, you must have done something really good or really bad, right, to be in there. And uh, what I love about these women, these faithful followers of Jesus, is what gets them a mention on the pages of Scripture is not some incredible grand thing that they've done that we might think is grand. It's simply that they supported the ministry of Jesus. And I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I can feel intimidated like, wow, what do I have to do to make a difference? Do I have to be some incredible person who travels the world? What do I have to do? But I love the example of these women. They were faithfully devoted to Jesus and out of their own means, they supported his ministry to change the world. And I just think, how encouraging. You don't have to be a superstar. All you have to do is be a faithful follower of Jesus, committed to seeing him build the church around the world. And right now in this moment, that's what we're doing. And I'd love to encourage you that with what you have, the, the little that you have, or maybe the much that you do have, you're not just giving to some charity. You are giving to see Jesus change lives around the globe. So I'd love to pray for you as we do this together. God, I thank you so much that you give us the opportunity to be involved in the transformational work you are doing around the world. And Lord, we give you what we have today out of love and out of adoration, devotion for you, God. And I pray you would take the little that we have and use it so that many, many people will come to find you. In Jesus' name, amen. Here at C3 Church Ride, we have online and on-site programs for kids and youth. For kids, there are weekly online episodes with specific episodes for those in early childhood and primary school, as well as on-site kids church at Saturday 5 p.m., Sunday 9.30 a.m. and Sunday 11 a.m. For those high school age, there is Full House Youth with regular online content uploaded to YouTube as well as on-site gathering every Friday night, Saturday 5 p.m., Sunday 9.30 a.m., and Sunday 11 a.m. during the school term. Check out the church website for all of your Full House Youth and Kids Church links and info.
Hi church, here I am at home. Most of you will know that I had a little bit of an accident. I've been really enjoying my walking and praying. And this has been a season where my prayer life has really increased and it was around walking in, in nature. And But things do happen. And so I have injured myself, but I will make a full recovery. It's just taken a bit longer than what I would have imagined or thought, but thank you for praying for me. And I tell you what's amazing is all around the world, we've got our pastors who've said, look, we want to walk and pray for you. And I know some of you are walking and praying as well. And uh, just this morning, one of our pastors wrote something uh, and to encourage the other pastors about Enoch who walked with God. And he said, what's interesting is when you walk with somebody, you have conversations. And he was just saying that he's been inspired to walk and so therefore he's having more conversations with God that's a really cool thought hey I want to encourage you you can join us you can get on my Instagram and you can see the people from Syria from Egypt from Iraq from Serbia from Russia from Kazakhstan they're all participating and this is a season of prayer we are on our move forward this is a very important stage for the whole church globally we are entering into a, a period where we are going to see the Holy Spirit move in profound ways. We've had this adjustment. We've been focusing on deeper things, what's really important. And of course, at this season too, we've got this beautiful series that we've been doing, The Seven Sentences. And uh, Pastor Brent has produced a wonderful study guide. It's on our website. The Connect groups are doing it. You can download that and go through it. It is magnificent. Also, too, I just want to give you an update with Pastor Charles and Linda. They were absolutely devastated by the cyclone, ripped the church to pieces. Many of their members have suffered loss of their homes. In fact, they've had members die as well. But they are so grateful for your generosity. They've put the roof on their building already, which is magnificent. And now they're moving into the community to help as many people rebuild. So thank you for your generosity. We're getting our hearts ready. We're on our way. We're moving. And I want to pray for you right now. Anything can happen at any time. But one thing that we are certain of is that God is with us. You can have sort of like myself a, a, a mishap, <clears throat> which you weren't planning for. But the Lord is still with us and he's working in with us. And I want to pray for you. So wherever you are, whatever challenges you've got, Maybe you are sensing you're moving into something new. I want to pray for you right now. So just close your eyes as I pray for you. Father, where anybody is right now in this moment, that your Holy Spirit would touch them profoundly. Perhaps they're like me, need healing. Perhaps, Lord, they need adjustment in their work uh, life. Maybe there's something that needs to happen financially or in relationships. You are Emmanuel. God with us. Holy Spirit, come in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring about great moves of your Holy Spirit. Lord, let there be a great sense of your presence, your peace, your love, your hope, your joy in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, God bless church. I just want to speak the name. Your name is healing, your name
Welcome to our series, ongoing series of seven sentences through the Old Testament. Uh, We're telling a big story here. We've had great two weeks, first of all, and today we're looking at a sentence of the Bible that comes from the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I'll read it for you. It says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Now, we'll talk about the context of that in just a moment. But the big item, the big ticket item we want to look at today in this message is this concept that is all through Scripture, the concept of redemption, salvation through redemption. And uh, it's such a powerful uh, theme that runs all through Scripture, not just in the New Testament, but very much in the Old Testament as well. So where we're starting out. Um, An Exodus, the story of the Exodus of God's people from Egypt to the Promised Land is the key redemption story in all of the Old Testament. Now, God made promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He promised them a land. He promised them that they would be a great nation, that all of the nations of the world would be blessed. And we know that ultimately that fulfillment has come through Jesus coming into the world, giving his life that all people might have, a, might have a relationship with God. But God calls a man called Moses. Now, Moses has had an interesting life, 40 years in the Egyptian royal household, although he's a Hebrew, he's one of God's people by birth. Then he kills an Egyptian, wrong thing to do, taking matters into his own hands, runs away And for 40 years, he lives in the land of Midian, in the wilderness, essentially, as a shepherd, far from the uh, heirs and graces of the royal court of Egypt. But God speaks to him. God comes into his life at the age of 80, Moses is, and God speaks to him and says, go to Egypt, go back where you came, go and speak to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Now, the people 
uh, or the children of Israel, as they were called then, had been in Egypt for 400 years. They'd gone there originally through Jacob's family because Joseph was there as the prime minister and he provided food and so they were saved. And But 400 years later, that's all forgotten. Uh, Joseph's forgotten, Jacob's forgotten by the Egyptians and now the people of God there are slaves and they are oppressed. And God says, Moses, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But God always has a plan. You know, Moses doesn't think the plan's going to work, but the plan will work because God sends 10 plagues of increasing, I suppose, intensity and ferocity. And until finally there's the 10th plague, a very, very sad situation across this whole nation of Egypt that the plague of death, the death of the firstborn would be sent. But God says, Moses, I have a plan for my people. You are going to lead them out of here very, very soon. In these next days, you're going to leave Egypt because you will celebrate the Passover meal. When you have this meal, you will slaughter a lamb. Each, each uh, household would slaughter a lamb. You will eat the meat of it. You'll eat, the, eat some bread and bitter herbs, but you will also paint the blood on the doorpost of your home. That is a sign that death is going to pass you over. It, death will not touch you. Death will pass you over. It will affect the Egyptians, but it will not touch you. And so that's exactly what happens. They eat the Passover. The angel of death passes over them, but touches the rest of Egypt. And now this happens in around 1400 BC. And so they leave Egypt. Now, of course, Pharaoh, he changes his mind. Surprise, surprise. And so he sends his army out after the children of Israel. And Moses and Aaron lead them to the Red Sea. But then it seems like they're stuck. They have Pharaoh's army with his chariots and his mighty warriors behind them, and they have the sea, the ocean in front of them. But God says, it's okay. I will take you through where there is no way. I make a way where there is no way. And so, of course, we know the story. They made their way across the Red Sea, an amazing story of salvation, making their way through. Pharaoh's army was held up. They made their way through. It was incredible. Now, Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, well, I should say, of course, once Pharaoh's army goes in, of course, the sea closes over them, and that's the end of Pharaoh's army. And so the people are saved. They're free. But Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, takes place at Mount Sinai three months later after these events, after the Passover and after crossing of the Red Sea. Now, Exodus chapter 20, if you look in your Bible, Exodus chapter 20 sometimes has a heading there saying the Ten Commandments. But Exodus chapter 20 doesn't start with laws. It doesn't start with commandments. It actually starts with God saying two important things in the verse that we just looked at. These are the things he said. First of all, he said who he was. He says, I am the Lord your God. The second thing, he says what he has done. I have brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery. Now, sometimes people might think that, you know, in the Old Testament, it was the law that saved people. If you kept the law, then you were saved. No, the law didn't, uh, the law hadn't even been given yet when God says that he has saved them and has redeemed them and has brought them out of Egypt. So it wasn't the law that saved them. The way the Israelites were to live was a response to God's salvation of them. It's a response to God's salvation. When God made a covenant with the people, it was his initiative. That's the thing about covenants in the Bible. We come across this word covenant. It's God who makes covenants with people. People do not make covenants with God. God makes covenants with people. It's God's initiative. You know, the thing is, salvation is always God's idea. Always. It's his grace. And salvation is achieved in him. And that's what makes Christianity so different to any other faith, is that other faiths, it's all about what you have got to do to kind of clamber your way to get to the divine, to get to heaven, to maybe be accepted by God. God says, I have redeemed you. I've purchased you. I have, through Jesus, given my life for you. You just need to believe. You just need to have faith in that. It's the central sweeping message of the whole Bible. 
God's redemption, God's redemptive plan. God loves people. God loves you. But you can't save yourself. And the answer is Jesus. God loves you. You can't save yourself. But the answer is Jesus. There is a way. Psalm 130 verse 8. It says, he himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Psalm 43, sorry, Isaiah 43 verse 1 says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. What a personal God we have. He knows our name. He calls us by name. He's redeemed us. Isaiah 44 verse 22 says, I have swept away your offences like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. You know, when we come to the New Testament, around 1,400 years after, a little bit more, 1,400 years and a bit, after that first Passover meal, Jesus is sitting with his disciples. And he is sharing the Passover. It's what we now know as the night before Good Friday, which would be his death. And he says something incredible in Matthew chapter 26, verse 27 and 28. It says, then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Have you thought about why Jesus chose the Passover festival to die? Because he did choose it. I mean, Jesus was in charge. He didn't have his life taken away from him. Events around him didn't conspire to come against him. He always knew what was happening. And he went to Jerusalem knowing what he would do, knowing how things would play out. And that's exactly what happened. So why did Jesus choose Passover to lay down his life? Because he is the once and only, the once and for all Passover lamb. He is the eternal one. No more do sacrifices need to be made. No more blood on doorposts. No more rules and regulations which seem so complex. We Yes, we want to live right with God. We want to do what's right and we want to live holy lives, but we are not saved by any of that. We are saved when we believe that Jesus' blood was poured out for you and for me. That's faith. So the original Passover in Egypt was a signpost to the ultimate eternal Passover lamb giving his life that others may live. Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. We already have it. Isn't that good news? We actually don't have to seek it out. We actually already have it. You see, the thing about redemption is this, though. Redemption, in God's plan for salvation for you, it's, it's like it's been purchased for you. It's like someone bought a card, a gift card for you. Now, this is a trivial example, but I hope you sort of understand what I'm saying. When people don't know what to buy me, or actually I really quite like getting these, people buy me gift cards or vouchers, and then it's up to me to go and use it. But it's already been paid for, right? Now, in my household, there's often times where Where's that card? Oh, gosh, it expired. Where's that card that used to be on the fridge? It was there six months ago. Oh, gosh, that's a shame. It had $50. Oh, gosh. (laughs) But you see, the thing is, that's sad because it's actually already been paid for. But I don't always get to use it. Jesus has paid for you. Jesus has paid for your life. Jesus has paid for your forgiveness. Jesus has paid for you to be free. But it's up to you and me to use it. It's up to you and me to have faith in that and to appropriate it into your life, into our life. There's no condemnation though for you. A beautiful verse is in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 which says, therefore there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your saviour, as your Lord, there'll be ups and downs, we'll make mistakes, sure, but there's no 
condemnation because you have already been purchased. You have been bought. And at what a price it was, the life of the Son of God. But Jesus, he did it because he loves you and he has a plan for your life. Today, you might be in one of two groups of people. Maybe you're a person that believes in Jesus. I hope that's so. If you believe in Jesus, like I do, I know that for me, sometimes I still end up going back to Egypt. I still end up going back to a place of slavery, of getting caught up in wrong things, of getting caught up in sin and bad attitudes and bad patterns of behavior and thinking. Today, I wanna to pray for us that when we believe in Jesus, we would not go back to Egypt. You see, God has called us out of slavery. He's called us out of Egypt. That's not our location anymore. We are people of the kingdom. Why don't I pray for people right now? Lord, I thank you that for everyone watching, Lord God, who believes in you, we pray that we will not go back to old patterns, to old habits, to old addictions, to old selfishness. Lord, we pray that we would live free lives. We pray, Lord God, that by faith, we through your Holy Spirit would be empowered to live your way. But we thank you, Lord, that you love us and you've redeemed us. Maybe the second group of people I just want to shout out to right now are just people that maybe you've never made a response to Jesus. Or maybe you have, but maybe that was a little while ago and you've kind of gone off track. If you're honest, we can go off track, right? God loves you. He wants you back. Come to him. You, all you need to do is just with a little bit of faith in your heart, just come and pray a prayer. I'm going to lead us in a prayer right now. You can pray this prayer. God loves you. He wants you to come to him. His arms are not closed. They are open to you. All right. So how about we pray? It's going to be on the screen. You can pray along with me. Dear God in heaven, thank you that you love me. Jesus, I believe that you died for me. I've gone my own way. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Help me to follow you from now on. Help me to have faith in you for the rest of my life. Amen. Wonderful. If you've prayed that prayer, what a great decision. God bless you heaps, eh? And I tell you, there's some information on the screen. Why don't you just let us know that you've made that decision because we just love to pray for you and support you. Hey, God bless you. Have a great week. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Yes, Shout Jesus from the mountains, and Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness of every enemy.
Well, thanks for joining us at Church Online. You can join us next week online again, on the hour, every hour from 5 p.m. Saturday night, or you can join us in person. We'd love to see you there. Have a great week. See you.